Prime Minister, isn't your decision not to take part in the debate tonight a bit of a metaphor for your whole campaign? You're very happy to repeatedly criticise the Labour Party, but for your own plans, you're reluctant to give us very much detail at all, whether that's on Brexit, your future immigration system, how many people will use your winter fuel allowance. You won't give detail, will you? No, what I've done in terms of our manifesto is been open with the British people about the great challenges that we face as a country over the next few years and beyond, and how we will address those challenges. And you talk about the Brexit negotiations, I've sat out very clearly what our 12 objectives are for those Brexit negotiations. I believe that's the right thing to do, but as we go into those negotiations, which start just 11 days after election day, the question that people must ask themselves on election day is who do they want to see? fighting for Britain in those negotiations? Who do they want to see taking this country forward, building a more prosperous Britain for the future? The questions that people also have is about the practical things that you would actually do if you're re-elected. So can you tell us now, how would the immigration system work after Brexit? Who will lose their winter fuel allowance? Where will you set the social care cap? Because if you don't, there is this sense, you're using these slogans again and again, you're talking about your broad principles, but you're trying to hide behind that. You won't tell people what you'd actually do. No, we've been very clear. Let's look at the issue like the winter fuel payments and the uh, issue around social care. What we've been very clear with people about and open with people about is that yes, we do face the pressures of an aging society. In just 10 years time, there'll be two million more people aged over 75 in this country. And if we don't do something about our social care system, the system will simply collapse. So what we're proposing is a system where people can protect more savings to pass on to their children, where they won't have to sell their home in their lifetime to pay for their care bills, so that worry will be taken away from them, and there will be a cap on the absolute level the that funding that, that they have, have to pay. Prime Minister, is if you keep repeating broad principles but don't give the detail, People will worry, for example, that millions of people might lose their winter fuel allowance or the cap on social care might be set at an extremely high level. Don't people want more from you? Because you're basically saying on many of these big issues, I'll get back to you. What I'm saying is I will listen to you. And I think that's important. You can approach this in one of two ways. I've set out the broad principles of our policy. I've shown how we will provide a sustainable, long-term, uh, long sustainable social care system for this country, which we need because the system will collapse unless we do something and do it now. But what I'm also saying to people is I want to listen to them about where that cap should be, about where we should means test uh, winter fuel payments. Listen to voters, listen to organisations, charities and others working with older people. Consult with them. I think that's the open thing for a government to do. Don't you think, though, that when it comes to the decision that you're asking voters to make, that you owe it to them, as a politician who wants people to take her at her word, to give more precise details on a whole range of things about when you will bring immigration down, when you would keep that promise, where these caps will be on social policy? Don't you think, think people deserve more? I think what we owe to people is to be open with them about the challenges we face as a society and as a country, to be open with them about the challenge of the Brexit negotiations, about the challenge of our ageing society, of securing our economy for the future, which, and we have been, and be open with them about the solutions that we're offering. And then I think I also owe it to people to say, yes, in some of these, we will listen to you, we will work with you, we will ensure that the details of what we're doing, we announce after we've consulted with people. We're the party that is showing that we have the willingness to be open with people, that there are challenges ahead, there are hard choices ahead, but we can grasp the opportunities that are ahead for us as well. And I'm optimistic about the opportunities that this country can have for a better future, because I believe in Britain and I believe in the British people. Just finally, and very briefly, Prime Minister, you say repeatedly, no deal is better than a bad deal, but you also say if we get Brexit wrong, the consequences would be dire. Don't those two things contradict themselves? Because if it's a bad deal, you'd walk away. 
if we, if we get a bad deal, then it would be, the consequences would be very difficult for this country. And if you look at what a bad deal might be, you know, there are people in Europe who talk about punishing the UK. I think that could lead to a bad deal. And some politicians in other parties here in the UK who seem to want to be willing to accept a deal, whatever it is. I think that the Labour Party would look at taking any deal at the highest price. They'd end up with a worse deal at the highest price. That's not good for our future. That's not about negotiating Brexit. Strong and stable leadership in negotiating Brexit is about getting the right deal for Britain and the right deal that can ensure we have a strong and prosperous future.